Welcome back to part four of Door Dash Truth. I am Mr. Bet on You. Appreciate you for being here. Now, if you watched the first three videos, thank you very much. If you left a comment and you enjoyed it, appreciate you so, so much. We're going to talk about in part four the ugly side of the gig economy, the ugly side of DoorDash. The first three videos, I gave you guys some information, some positivity. I asked you guys a lot of questions. Today, I want to talk about, you know, on YouTube, we see a mostly negative content with DoorDash. We just do. Some people think it's the worst company ever. It's ridiculous. The app is stupid. This gig economy is crazy. That's all we hear. The neg negative, 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 because negativity sells. And sometimes this work is very unglamorous. We're by ourselves. We're doing crazy things and crazy customers and crazy apps and crazy merchants. But I'm going to give you some, some hard truths here. We're going to talk about some of the things that DoorDash won't tell you. But I think in order for us to appreciate the positive and stay in that, we have to also recognize and be real and look at DoorDash for what it is at times, right? DoorDash in St. Louis tells me I can make 25 bucks an hour. I can be my own boss, work when I want, cash out daily, earn when I want, all true things. But that's not all the truth. What they don't tell you is it's not like a W-2 where you get 25 bucks an hour and you have some kind of benefits and and stability and you have a little bit of like you're buying into something you don't have overhead at most jobs that are w-2s we have a lot of overhead we have we're using our vehicles our gas our insurance our depreciation we're using our time you're not putting into any type of you're not putting into benefits at all we have to figure out for taxes we're putting ourselves in unsafe compromising positions at times now some say this is more dangerous than police work. I think that is an absurd thing to say. But, you know, I, I would rather do DoorDash for five hours in St. Louis than do police work for five hours in St. Louis. So I, I don't think that matches. But it can be unsafe. We're delivering to strangers. We have no idea who's on the other side of the door. Sometimes you don't know the neighborhood exactly. You get to pick and choose, but it can be unsafe. The safest, the unsafest thing we do is we just drive. We're just driving a lot. So it puts us at more of a risk than the average person that just drives maybe 20, 30 minute commute. A lot of you guys are driving eight hours a day, four hours, five hours. You compound your unsafe situations more by just driving, coming in and out of parking lots, in and out of stores. A lot of things can happen. But DoorDash won't tell you that. DoorDash won't talk about the taxes, really. They might help you get some tax readiness and things like that. But most jasters that do this aren't really financially literate and putting themselves in a position to be okay as far as taxes and savings and putting away in a Roth IRA or some kind of 401k or an investment plan or savings. Most people aren't doing that to do DoorDash. But if you have a W-2, they might have an opportunity for you to do it and somebody does it for you and it just it makes it a lot easier. But once again, this work, like we said before, is not for everyone. But the ugly part is true, the things we're saying. Some people have some people say DoorDash has what they call a honeymoon period to where when you're a new dasher, they send you good orders and they just reel you in like a fish. They dangle the carrot ever so gently in the wind and they make you feel like you're really doing good and they get you excited and there's a gamification of it. It becomes addictive. I think these things are definitely very true. And then it makes you get hooked in by these good earnings and you want to keep chasing it. You have your first hundred dollar day. Then you're like, wow, I made a hundred bucks. I see triple digits. I had that feeling. Have you? Then it's like, can I make 125? Can I make 150? Can I get $200 a day? That guy on DoorDash or on YouTube, Pedro DoorDash Santiago said he made $2,000 in a week or $200 in a day. I want to try that. These are good goals to have, but that's not regular and it's not sustainable. This work is intended to be part time. The ugly side is also you sign terms of service. They could deactivate you at any point for doing any number of things without really even having to give you a reason. And when you try to reach out to DoorDash, it's a support agent. That's a third party agent. And they are overseas most of the time. And they're not going to help you. They might seem like they can, but their hands are tied. They can't really do that much. They can't. And many times you say, oh, you know what? Yeah. That was an algorithmic error. We're going to get you right back dashing on the road right now. No, if you get deactivated, something happened, whether it was your fault or not, and they're not going to be able to get you back on right away. We're at the mercy of the merchants. 
we have to have a good relationship with them. They have to be willing to do things. They got to be staff. They got to be quick. They got to use the dispatching system correctly. They have to like even using the dispatching system in order for us to facilitate orders for their consumers and drop it off. While most consumers are absolutely really, really, really good people, and most consumers do leave a tip, some don't. And if you live in an area where the tips are low, you're not going to make good money. Because DoorDash Base Pay, two bucks, two twenty-five. Sometimes as low as a dollar. Uber Eats, less than a dollar sometimes. Uber Eats will send you all over the world. They'll send you a three dollar order going twenty miles. I've seen it. It's no money on that. DoorDash customers or Uber Eats customers can take tips away. DoorDash customers can add to a tip, which is great. But most consumers that don't leave a tip in the first place aren't going to add to a tip or add to a tip to a tip. So the pay can be really low in some in some major metropolitan cities. It can be really high. It can also be really low. There's a lot of luck involved. DoorDash hides tips and information. They hide trip information, item counts, money. If a DoorDash customer tips 50 bucks, you're not going to see that. Now, those tips aren't normal. But even when a customer tips $5, DoorDash will hide in many times $4 or $4.50. And they'll give you, they'll tell you the order will be more with a little plus sign indication, or it might say total may be higher. And then you show up and there's two extra pennies on there or 25 cents or a dollar or two dollars or five dollars or 50 dollars. It'll go from nine bucks to fifty nine dollars. We've all seen it on YouTube and Reddit and Facebook. Though that's hides information to keep you guessing. If you're good at what you do and you live in a good market, it's not that big of a deal. Actually, we've talked about that. You could find the hidden tips. You know what merchants are good. You know, the areas not difficult. You could learn that in a week. You can learn that in a week. Not a big deal. But they're not being transparent. So there are times you might decline something that would be really, really good that if you saw the face value of everything, for example, you see 11 bucks going eight miles. You're like, no, I'm not doing that. Miles to money. I don't like where it leaves me. But if you knew that order was 20 or 30 bucks and they didn't hide the tip, I bet most of you are taking 20 bucks for eight miles, 30 bucks for eight miles. We're doing that, right? So that hinders the consumer and it also hinders your opportunity. These are just some of the ugly truths. You guys tell me what you don't like down below. Some of you might say, I don't like the programs page. Or I don't like that there's a large order program. There's a diamond program. There's this new tier program. I don't like that they changed my completion rate from 80 to 90%. I don't like all the games to make me feel like an employee. A lot of you guys say that. I don't mind it as much, but my perspective is a little different. But nonetheless, there is definitely an ugly side to the gig economy. OK, if you do this long enough, you're going to run into issues like most lines of work. What did I miss? Drop a comment down below. But there's definitely an ugly side to the gig economy. I do think there are a lot of workers that do get and are being taken advantage of. But typically, those type of workers are going to be taken advantage of in any job or in any line of work that they choose to do. You and I have the option to decide what we want. And are we being taken advantage of or not? The opportunities are endless. This is a good segue for the final chapter, part five, which will air tomorrow. Part five, you versus them. How can you use the gig economy differently than somebody else, another gig worker, and have a way better experience just by looking at the apps differently? We'll get into that tomorrow. But before I leave, appreciate you guys for watching this. Drop a comment. I'm going to be reading all these comments. I want to know what did I miss? What's the ugly, ugly side? What's is there a more of an underbelly to DoorDash and the gig economy that I didn't even this was surface level. What else is down there? Right. And for all my drivers that have been doing this for five years or more, because in yesterday's video, I answered the question, will I be doing this five years from now? If you're a five year or more driver, let me know in the comments down below. Share some of your experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly. And how long will you continue to be in this? And why have you been in it for five years or more? Let's see who's been the gig economy driver the longest. Share some stats if you want, a story, whatever. This series, this DoorDash Truce, is a positive little series mostly. And I want to hear from you guys and read the comments. And I want to hear, I want to learn from you guys' experiences and what you think the DoorDash Truce are, the gig economy Truce are. But share with me how long you've been doing this and why. You guys are great. Come back for part five. 
We'll get the regular video. By the time you're watching this, the regular videos are going to start coming back out very, very soon. Your boy's on vacation. But I wanted to give you guys some content and do this little series with you guys. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I know this is different. I know some of these things we've talked about before a little bit here and there. But I wanted to make it a one like a little mini series. It will stand alone. I'll have it in a playlist so that new drivers, old drivers, medium drivers, big drivers, small drivers, all the drivers can come and watch it and watch it in a little series of clips. So you guys are amazing. Come back tomorrow. We'll, we'll round out this little uh, little series we've been doing. Peace.